Dr. Phys Theoretical Physics Parseval's Theorem. This deals with Fourier transforms. Let's look at a definition of a probability distribution, p of x, which arises from taking a function f of x and taking the complex conjugate of f of x and multiplying those together. You will recognize this is what they do in quantum mechanics, where this is the wave function f of x, and you take the complex conjugate of the wave function to get the probability distribution. Well, we don't need quantum mechanics because we're going to take this as a definition. And given this definition, I'm going to show you a neat result that relates f of x with its Fourier transform in a certain way involving normalization. Normalization refers to the fact that when I integrate this, I get 1. When I integrate over everything, I get 1. In other words, my probability must be 1 to get something when I consider all the cases. Something has to happen. So here I'm going to write my f of x as building it up from the e to the plus i k x's. Remember this rule where you think of constructing, uh, synthesizing or making the f of x function from these components, kind of like your Fourier components in this integral form, this Fourier transform idea. So this here is actually the inverse Fourier transform because you're getting f of x from the coefficients capital F of k. But I like to think of this as constructing the f of x from these pieces e to the plus i k x and this is my weighting factor. It gives an idea of how much each of these contribute in the integration. Then when I have this set up like this I take the complex conjugate and that's simply taking the complex conjugate of the Fourier transform because f of k with a capital F is your Fourier transform of the function f of x and then I flip here the sign for the, the exponential since i star is negative i. Notice here I introduce k prime because I'm going to multiply these two together and since this k is integrated over I have to make sure I pick a different integration variable here otherwise it will be confusing. I'll have two integrations with respect to k and that's not what we're supposed to do here. We're supposed to integrate all of this see, with some variable k and then all of these with some variable k prime so as to keep it distinct from this other summation or as a integration variable. So doing that we uh, construct the p of x by multiplying these together. So what we'll have here, if we simply copy uh, the f of x uh, here over on the right side and the f uh, star of x over here on the left uh, factor on these uh, two uh, situations that we're multiplying here, let's see if we can work it out and get everything. Well we have 1 over the square root of pi and there's two of those factors so that's 1 over 2 pi. We then have a double integral since we're integrating over k and k prime. We see that we have an f star of k prime and an f of k and then here for the exponentials we have e to the i k x and e to the minus i k prime x. So this takes care of it right here for us, these two combined. And now we integrate this over all the x's since we must get one and see what happens. This is the way to arrive at a very very neat result. So we integrate over all of the x's so that introduces another integration here one with respect to x and everything else from here has been simply copied down here. We just slap on a dx and an integral here that goes from negative infinity to plus infinity. Well with these three integrals that looks quite messy and scary but Dirac delta function idea comes to the rescue because here when we integrate the dx one first since these are uh, independent of each other we're going to get that neat result with the Dirac delta function so let's get prepared for that by bringing the f star and f uh, factors here out to the left because they involve k move the 1 over 2 pi in here with the x integration and the x stuff here for the integrand, the e to the i 
times that k minus k prime times the x, then I recognize this. See, that's that signature 2 pi, 1 over 2 pi, which you get for the Dirac delta function integral representation. And then you have something here, like a dx and an x up there. And what's in front here, uh, ignoring the i, that's going to get your delta of k minus k prime. So this here gets replaced with the Dirac delta function k minus k prime and that means one of these integrals k or k prime can be done very very quickly in fact we're going to use the uh, result here to do the k prime integration and what that says is that we will sift out from the k prime integration the values where k prime equals k so that means this integral is very easy to do because of the Dirac delta function. We simply have the result here when k prime equals k. So that means we have two k's here, f star, capital F star k, and then f k, and the k prime integration is finished. It's sift out for us. This Dirac delta function sift out the case where k prime equals k. Now this result is very, very elegant. This is the Parseval's theorem here. This is Parseval's theorem because what it's telling us here, which makes it very elegant, is that if the f of x is normalized, which means if you take f star f and integrate and get 1, then the Fourier transform is normalized in its k space. You can think of this as like two spaces. Here's coordinate space, the x, and then in some transform space, the k space, we have the Fourier transform. And this says there's a conservation of the probability in each space. So if the probability is normalized, you know, the function f of x normalized in the x space, when you take the Fourier transform, you don't lose that. That still is intact. That integration over all the cases gives you one. Very, very nice uh, applications of this in quantum mechanics where x refers to the coordinate space and k is your momentum. p is h bar k and you can see by a Fourier transform a relationship there. Well, we're not going to do that as quantum mechanics, but at least make a, a little point there how that's applied if you should take quantum mechanics.